What no. happened in free 25 AD in the Nasir conference? Can you answer what the question? What happened in 325 AD in the Nasir conference? We'll do a question conference? for a question. I'll answer I'm talking to you. I'm not asking. I'm talking to you. Never. I'm big I'm daddy. Talking to you as well. I'm big daddy. Okay, if we're going to interrupt each other, you boys can go have fun. Let me just finish my point right here. My point. Hold on, don't assume my gender. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. You assumed our genders. Wow. Not very progressive. Watch all the Muslims become triggered. Okay. Yes, come on. Because if I was to say that we should pass laws in England that said that the life of a Muslim was worth less than the life of a Christian, uh -huh. every one of these Muslims, to a man and woman, yes. would be calling that Islamophobia. Yeah. I'm against killing LGBT anywhere in the world. Let me ask you, are you against the idea of killing Muslims who want to become Christian? Abdul the what? The slanderer. I called him Abdul. <laughs> he calls me Bob the, Bob the liar. I call him Abdul the slanderer. Ah, okay. Stuart, ah, the slanderer. You debate me on one supposed lie. <laughs> one lie, I challenge you. Yeah, one one. Well, only one, only one, only one. I, do, I dare you to only, only debate one, me on one, one lie. Only one lie. All right, so don't call Come and. If you want to ask, if you want to expose him, you can expose him. You're not asking, you're not asking for me. You're not going to ask him to delete anything. Yeah? You're not going to ask him to delete anything. You know no, we're not you deleting know, anything. Do you understand what I said? Do you understand what I said? Leave that thing. Go away. Go away. No, no, you can't. You can't, bro. You can't go onto other people's cameras. Yeah. You then come and film me. What's the problem? You're filming him. I'm filming you. What's the problem? You're filming him. I'm filming you. What's the problem? Everyone, no, 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 you can't, you can't touch other people's cameras, bro. But this is Speaker's Corner, everybody films everybody. The reason why, yeah, but the point is, even if I asked you, A, you would ignore me, and B, you would have every right to ignore me. You would have every right to ignore me. Everyone who comes to this corner gets filmed, you know that. So stop whinging. Right, well, don't debate then, that's fine. But what I'm saying is you can't start touching other people's property. You don't have the right to touch other people's property. No, he yeah, has, but yeah, that's I the got, point. Right, that's what you're right wrong. He does have the right I to film right to you. Because this is Speaker's Corner. It's a public space. If Right, if you think he's broke the law, there's two police officers over yeah, there. No, go no, and no, take no, it no, up no, with no, him. Okay, go on. Yeah? Can you wait that time here? He, he's touching his property. You just gotta, you just don't, don't bite, guys. Don't bite, guys. You just gotta leave other people's stuff alone. Yeah, let's let's boil it down. Let's boil it down. It's all right, bro. Thank you. All right. I'm all right, thanks be to God. How are you? Good to see you. So, guys. What's going on, Bob? Welcome wanna, back, Bob. I want to talk about the BLM. All right. Black Lives Matter. The protests Ooh. and the movement. Yeah. The protests and the party. However, I want to start off by just saying that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out 10 theses. Okay. If you hear a theses that you object to, if you hear a thesis that you want to discuss or debate or ask a question on, yeah. just remember the number. That's all you need to do. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And then I'm going to invite you to come and have a discussion about that thesis, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. Okay. And I want to start off, it's a very windy day, as you can probably see in here, but I want to start off by reading from Isaiah 59, 16 to 20. All right. And it reads, And he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought salvation and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head and he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself with zeal as a mantle. According to their deeds, so he will repay 
wrath to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the coastlands he will make recompense. So they will fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. For he will come like a rushing stream which the wind of Yahweh drives. A redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgressions in Jacob declares Yahweh. I want to start off by saying in terms of the BLM and in terms of the kind of discussion that we're talking about that as Christians we do believe in institutional sin. Now some Christians, particularly those who are influenced by conservative political ideology or republican political ideology may object to the idea that of something like institutional sin. However, I would say to you, if you're someone who objects to that, do you consider an organization like Planned Parenthood to be institutionally sinful? No. Planned Parenthood is an organization that carries out abortions. Do you consider the Communist Party to be organizationally and institutionally sinful? Do you consider an Islamic Caliphate to be institutionally sinful? You see, if as Christians we are willing to say that the Communist Party is sinful, that Planned Parenthood is sinful, that the Caliphate is sinful, then we have to be open to the idea that institutions can and are sinful. And that means if we accept that racism is a sin, then we can accept that institutions can be racist. That is thesis number one. All right. Thesis number two. Number two, number two. The fact that institutions can be racist does not excuse anyone from personal responsibility. It is not the case that institutional sin legitimizes or excuses personal responsibility. And many of the struggles of black and ethnic communities, as well as the white working class, has actually nothing to do with institutional sin and has actually more to do with personal responsibility. Family breakdown is about personal responsibility. Absentee fathers are personal responsibility. Failures to do well at school is as much connected to institutional problems as it is connected to the problems of personal responsibility. Joining a gang is a personal choice that is personal responsibility. Knife crime is connected to personal responsibility. That is thesis number two. So, the consequences of sin can be inherited. They can pass on from one generation to the next. Some Christians who have bought into Republican or right-wing ideology are opposed to the idea that sin has a generational consequence. However, 
I would ask them to consider the sin of our all father Adam and our all mother Eve and the consequences that that has bore upon the entire human race. I would ask you to consider the Tower of Babel and the fact that the human species was separated by God by their languages because of sin, a consequence we still live with. I would ask you therefore to accept the possibility that slavery has a generational consequence and that black Americans particularly are living with that consequence. And it is an injustice that needs to be corrected. That is thesis number three. And just a reminder for anyone who's new, if you want to debate any thesis you hear, just remember the number, and at the end of the 10 thesis, you'll be invited to discuss. All right. Thesis number four. Number four, number four. It is not sufficient to accuse something or someone of racism, and that proves that they are racist. It is a category mistake because often the problems that the BME community face along with the white working class is connected to poverty, not racism. And that is particularly true in England where we don't have an entire community of people that have been settled here as a direct consequence of slavery. It is simply the transference of a narrative from America by the power of the media into the UK that has influenced many people. You have to prove it. Statues and memorials are not racist. Winston Churchill is not commemorated by a statue because of any views that may have been considered racist. He is being honoured by society because he was the leader that fought against Nazism, a racist ideology. The statue of Cecil Rhodes was not put up to commemorate him as a racist. It was put up because he was a significant figure in British history. I accept that he was probably a racist, but that is not the reason why the statue was put up. He is not being honoured for that reason. It is therefore not sufficient to say that because such and such a person held a view that may be racist, that that justifies public vandalism and mobbery. What it may do is mean that we need to have a debate about some of these statues. What I'm inviting people to do is to remember the thesis that they disagree with and then debate them after all 10 have been stated. That was thesis number four. Thesis number five. Racism is a sin for a Christian. And we believe this because we believe that all human beings are descended from the same origin and all human beings are imbued with the image of God and therefore any action or belief that denigrates the image of God within any human being is sinful. That includes racism and it includes slavery. It is an injustice 
and the church must fight against it. Again, for those of you who are not listening, after the 10 Thesis have been stated, you're invited to debate the thesis you want to. That was thesis number five. Pay attention. Thesis number six. The Black Lives Matter protest movement is not a singular movement, nor do they have a singular agenda. Some of those agendas, such as the fight against racism, Christians should support. But some of those agendas have nothing to do with racism. And they are more to do with liberal, progressive and Marxist ideologies that Christians cannot support, such as anarchy, such as communist economic systems, such as the liberation and the changing of the law to reflect the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transsexual agenda. Christians cannot support those beliefs. Thesis number seven. Attacks against the cenotaph are badly judged, harmful and make enemies of people that would otherwise be allies. When the BLM protests attacked the cenotaph, they were attacking a monument to the war dead of every family in England, as well as families right across the Commonwealth. People came together to fight against Nazism, a racist ideology, assaulting the cenotaph, burning the flag of the cenotaph, Graffitiing the cenotaph is an abuse of the honour, the culture and the identity of many British people who are against racism. And it cannot be justified. And the failure of the police to protect it brought shame upon the Metropolitan Police. Thesis number eight media representation of the multiple protests, both those by veterans and their allies who sought to defend those monuments and by the BLM were equally violent. However, the media downplayed the violence of the BLM protests while magnifying and raising as high the violence carried out by veterans and their supporters. Media representation of those protests were deceitful. Thesis number nine. The church should respond as Christians to these issues. We should not fall in with communists. We should not fall in with anarchists nor should we fall in with white supremacists. We should speak as Christians against all parties, seeking to steer them in a Christian direction, from a Christian viewpoint, opposing where we need to those groups that need to be opposed. Thesis number 10 is more of a challenge then it is a thesis, and it is directly to my Christian brothers and sisters who join the protests on either side. If you can protest to defend monuments from abuse, if you can protest against institutional racism, why can you not protest for the persecuted church? for the Christians in Pakistan who have their churches bombed, for the Christians in Egypt who have their churches bombed, for the Christians of Syria and Iraq who have faced 
an attempt at religious genocide. Why can you not protest for the Christians of Nigeria who are suffering in a campaign of mass murder? Why can you not protest for the Christians of Central African Republic who are fighting against jihadis? Why can you not protest against the slave trade, the Islamic slave trade that is carried out in Sudan, in North Africa and across the Arab world? If you can protest, then protest for Christians in solidarity for them. Thank you for your time. You You've all. heard the 10 Thesis. Now I'll take questions. Now's the opportunity for debate. Uh, questions? Hey. Uh, any questions? No questions? That's fine. I'll go on to my next topic. No questions at all? I thought you had a question, but he's gone now. Oh, the atheist. So he's gone. Alright, cool. Right, Bob. Some people want to heckle, but they don't want to they debate. Want yeah. Yeah. I'll always <laughs> one. <laughs> one god, one god. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, Bob. What we're facing today <laughs> is the fact that the right wing of politics are able to win elections, but they are losing the debate in the public sphere. Okay. They're losing the cultural war. Now, everybody who knows me knows that I don't fall into right or left wing politics. But I want to explain why we have a situation that the Conservatives are winning election after election and yet Conservative values are disappearing and being criminalised in the public sphere. And there are multiple reasons. The first reason is that we do not accept that the way people are formed within society is through education, through the media, through government legislation, the law, through a public discourse like this, and through activism on the street. Those who stand for traditional values need to learn to play chess. They need to learn how to win the battle on the street. Because all too often, what we do is nothing. <laughs> we sit at home and we complain at the TV. <laughs> We complain, we complain, but we are not activists. The left wing are busy breaking all their own rules. They will say, you can't be prejudiced about who you promote in a company. But if you hold traditional views and they become known in your workplace, I guarantee there is a chance that you're not going to get promoted. <laughs> That's a hard fact, Bob. It is time that those of us who hold to traditional values play by the rules that the left wing progressives are playing by. The left wing progressives have targeted and taken over the media. We need to find a way to counter that by defunding the BBC, yes. by cancelling the TV licence, yes. by supporting right-wing, conservative or traditional alternatives All right. that are more sympathetic to a Christian worldview, so long as they are not opposed to a Christian worldview. It means that we have to protest, but protest intelligently. Campaign, but campaign intelligently. Give us an example, Bob. So I'll give you an example. All right. Christians 
need to win for themselves the right to observe the Sabbath. We need to campaign that the blessings of the Sabbath be something that everyone can benefit from. Something that every worker can have a day of rest when they know that all their family and friends have that same day of rest. Christians need to fight for the right to pray outside of abortion clinics. <laughs> we need to we need to fight for the right to practice our own faith. We need to speak up for Christians who have been persecuted in Pakistan and Nigeria and India and Indonesia Somalia Somalia We need to involve people in our causes who are not Christian We need to have a culture that celebrates the family and creates families amongst our fellowships because we're not doing that and there's too many single people in the churches and it is the failure of our leaders we need to campaign against heretical bishops who do not believe in the Christian faith and who are simply using the church as an NGO for their humanist ideologies. Christians need to train. Christians need to organize. Christians need to unite. Christians need to mobilize. Christians need to resist. But you do that by letting go of your denominational nonsense. Yes. <laughs> because the kingdom of God is not served by sectarianism Christians there are a gulf of people who have traditional values red-pilled conservatives <coughs> who would make natural allies of a Christian cause make allies with them drag them away from the ethno-nationalists separate them from the racists and push the racists out of the camp by owning the causes of the traditional conservative be activists for traditional values, for the defense of the family, for education that is not indoctrination. Right now the progressives are running rampant through the education system. Campaign that your child should not be forced to eat halal meat. <laughs> <laughs> no. Campaign that halal meat should be clearly labelled so that those that want halal meat can have halal meat and those that don't want halal meat can avoid halal meat. Yeah. Campaign that your children not be taught values of the LGBTQ T plus X Y Z agenda. Ooh, yeah. We are Christians. Our children do not belong to the state. Stand up against abortion. Christians own the fight against racism, but own that fight from a Christian narrative. Stand up to the BNP, but as Christians, stand up to the communists as Christians. We have to unite, we have to train, 
We have to organize, we have to mobilize, and we have to resist. Because the kingdom of God is about justice. And I want to close this out by quoting a passage of scripture. In Amos 5, 24, we read, Amos 5, 24, we read, This is the word of our God. Praise the Lord. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. If we as Christians are not about fighting for justice, then we are not true disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that means we have to oppose all forms of injustice. That means we oppose the racists, the communists, the Islamists, the caphilates, the caliphates, the capitalists. As Christians, we speak. No, bro, I'm not debating you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just asking one question. Okay, let me finish. As Christians, this is our cause. As we are reminded to fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil. Okay, question. Amen. Yaya always loves the camera. He always <laughs> loves to be in front of the camera. That, that's why I, uh, now I have my own channel. So I can oh, yeah. go on the camera whenever I like. Uh, yeah, Any, yeah. Anyway, my question, my, my question, you're talking about justice. Yes. Is What's the, the father, oh, is the father yeah. just with the son to <laughs> take his blood to forgive the oh, sinner? Yeah. Is the father just with the son to accept the innocent blood of the son to, to forgive the sinner? Thank okay, you. that's your question. Yeah. Right. <laughs> The question was totally off topic. It was, it was. Yeah. And not related to anything that I said. Just, just No, bro. Bro, no, no, you no, asked no, the no, question. No, 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 no. But let's talk about justice in Islam. All right. Answer because, first. Answer first. Because these are the kinds of things that Islam teaches. Okay. Islam teaches that you can still own a slave today. Wow. Islam teaches that the blood of a Christian is valued at less than the blood of a Muslim. Wow. This is Islam wrong. teaches yeah. that a man can marry four women, wow. but a woman can't marry four men. <laughs> Islam teaches yeah. that the testimony of a woman yeah. is worth half that of a man in court. Why? Why? Because, because they're mentally deficient, according to Muhammad. Wow. Islam teaches. Islam teaches that Christians and Jews yeah. should be treated as dhimmis, as second-class citizens in an Islamic state. Wow. I will not take lectures <laughs> from a Muslim about justice. I will not take lectures from a Muslim about justice. Exactly. Exactly. Furthermore. Furthermore. Islam does not believe yeah. in original sin. Okay. So it does not believe in the idea that sins can be inherited or passed on. <laughs> so what the hell are they doing joining in with a narrative that depends on exactly that perspective? That's a good question. Maybe Christians can join into that. No, bro, you go find your own camera. You've asked your question. <laughs> you didn't answer my question. I <laughs> said yeah, that I would not take lectures you talk, from a Muslim you talk about, about Muslim. justice. You yeah, talk yeah, about you Muslim that, and you rely on the innocent blood to have your salvation. Where's the justice between, if he was killed, between your God? Okay, listen, listen, listen. If he was killed, yeah, yeah. Yeah. according to Sharia law, yeah. Is the money that's paid for his blood money less than what would be paid for you if you were killed? I, why I, you? Why you? Answer, answer the question. Okay, I, I answer the question. Go and answer it. Uh, you say that Islam is false. Quran is false. The Prophet is false. So come to your Christianity. 
can you just justify the death of the innocent son and the father accepting the blood of the innocent to forgive the sinner? This is the question. He, did, he didn't answer my he didn't answer my question. That wasn't okay, the question. Okay, that okay, wasn't okay, okay, okay. He didn't answer the question. Nothing. I'll answer it for him yeah. using his own holy book. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. That's fair, that's fair. Surah that's fair. 2, yeah. Ayah 178. Ah, okay. No, if you are a Christian yeah. or a Jew, I want you to remember this is what the Muslims want to have applied to you. Ah, okay. If they believe in the Quran. <laughs> now, let's be honest. There are lots of good Muslims. Yes. They are better than their book yes. because they are better than their prophet. Yes. However, yes. let's just look at what Muhammad said okay. that Ma Allah said. Well, okay, okay, I know. He's telling me God. Talking about blood money. Okay. For those of you that don't know, yes. blood money is the compensation paid when you kill someone. Oh, okay. Okay? Yes, we got it, we got Good. it. Good, this is what it says. Oh, Bob. Oh, you who believe. All right. So that's the Muslims. Okay. The law of Kisas is prescribed for you in case of murder. The free for the free, yes. the slave for the slave, the female for the female. But if the killer is forgiven by the brother, of the killed against blood money. So in other words, you pay blood money instead of having a life for a life. Okay. Is it that in Torah? Listen. Eye for an eye. Listen. Tooth for a tooth. Listen. Then adhering it with fairness and payment of blood money to the heir should be made in fairness. This is an alleviation and a mercy from your Lord. So after this, whoever transgresses the limits, the killer, he shall have a painful torment. Now, when you look up the hadiths and the practice of Sharia law, go and check it right now on Google. Yeah, check it, check it. In Saudi Arabia, a place where Islam has dominated for 1400 years. <coughs> The blood money for a Christian man is half that of a Muslim man. Whoa. However, as an insult to every Muslim woman, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the blood of a Christian man is equal to a Muslim woman. Whoa. <laughs> but the blood money for a Christian woman yeah. is half that Muslim of a Muslim woman. Wow. So what are they saying in Sharia law? They are saying that the lives of Christians are half the value of the lives of Muslims. Ooh. That is what Sharia law answer teaches. That. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, answer yeah. it, please. Answer that, please. Don't go to the Trinity. I'm not going to the Trinity. I come back so, my, to my original question, which no, no, no. You, that. That. Avoid, that you avoid to answer. Blood is, is the father. Is the father answer about the blood money. just with his son? If you can answer me, I will answer all your questions. Okay. He he told you, ladies and you gentlemen, knew that. You knew that. I invite you. I, am my time. I invite you. Okay. <laughs> I invite you. I'm wasting my time. He's is not there answering. anyone that wants, who is a Christian, yes. who wants to say that the life of Yahya is worth half my life? Put your hand up. No. Right. No. Now, according to Islam, yeah. my life is worth half of his. Yeah. Put your hand up if you think that is unjust. I will answer on Do the comment Do you think section. that is unjust? I will answer on the comment section. Now, let me ask you this question. As Christians, are we not called to fight against injustice? Yes. Does that not mean, as Christians, we are called to fight against Sharia law. Yes. Does that not mean as Christians, 
We are called to fight against Islamification. Yes. Does that not mean, as Christians, we are called to fight against the teachings of this book? Yes. I ask you, is there any Muslim who is willing to defend, or you, Yahya, <laughs> willing to defend yeah, yeah. the Islamic practice that my life is valued as half that of yours in Sharia law? Answer that. Answer that. Please. Let, let, let me answer. Yes. If, for the sake of argument, I, I admit and agree with you that Islam, Quran, God and Prophet are false, how, ca how can I trust a father who forsake and betrayed his son and accept his innocent blood to forgive the sinner? This is my question. This is my challenge. This is this is my challenge. Ooh. This is my challenge. Or answer. Do you know this? <laughs> Yahya is embarrassed by his prophet. Yes. He is embarrassed by 1400 yes. years of Islamic practice. Wow. Not at all. Yes. Not at all. Islam at all. teaches that the blood money for a Christian Islam is teaches. half that of a Muslim. A Muslim. Yes. Islam so teaches. if you pay. Fifty thousand pounds if you kill a Muslim, yeah. you only have to pay twenty-five thousand if you kill a Christian. It's How is Jesus. that not an apartheid system? As Muslim, how is that teach, not like a Muslim, the apartheid in America and South Africa? Islam, Islam teaches that a Christian he woman he doesn't want to can marry a Muslim man. I'm not coming to argue. But a Christian man cannot marry a Muslim woman. Oh. How is that not unfair <laughs> on Muslim know. women? Yeah. How is that not unfair Are you a Muslim on woman? Christian men? Are you a Muslim yeah. woman? Do I look like a Muslim? Do I look like one? Do you see the Do you see the mockery? Yeah, they, that's all they got. No answers. No answers. Mockery. That's that's just mockery. That's that's mockery. It, do you agree he's with the idea? Let me ask him. Yeah, yeah ask him, ask him. Let me ask you. Why don't he? Do you agree with the idea that a Christian man? cannot marry a Muslim woman even if they want to marry. Simple answer. I believe in God's law. I don't care what you say. So, I think that was, yes, oh, yeah, I agree oh, yeah. week, yeah. with the apartheid system of Islam. Ooh. He ap that's agrees that's, 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 that's with the apartheid system. We, we Muslim, we He agrees. Let me ask you another question. I'm not talking to you. No, no, let me answer you. Let me ask you another question. Let me ask you another question. He doesn't Let me ask you another question. He, he don't want to do you answer. agree? Fire away, fire away. Do you agree what a, that the life what of a, a joke Christian, you are. What like a joke me and you, you man to man, yeah, what a joke. in Islamic law, he consider himself is considered man. to be he half the value the question. I tell you for a Christian as opposed about, to a Muslim. Let's talk about Christian law instead. No, no, no. How about that? No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Let's talk about the Christian law. No, no. Notice, the he's he's changing the topic. Do you want to hear him answer my question? Yeah. We want to answer the again. Answer the again. No. Answer. Can I speak now? Answer the question. Can yeah. I speak? Yeah. First of all, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I don't have to justify anything in my religion. You are no ah. one to me. Yeah? Do you understand? <laughs> it's it's my religion. It's God's ah. law. How about that? I'm happy. So with he it. agrees so, with it. So who the hell? He agrees. To ask me about my religion. Right. Now let me. Now watch this, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes. Watch all the Muslims become triggered. Okay. Yes. Come on. Because if I was to say that we should pass laws in England that said that the life of a Muslim was worth less than the life of a Christian, uh -huh. every one of these Muslims <laughs> to a man and woman yes. would be calling that Islamophobia. Yes. That's what yes. they would be as doing. A, as a Muslim, <laughs> but yet they are defending hello, 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 Sharia law hello. that says exactly yes. the same, yes. Yes. but in reverse. Wow. Stop shouting and let me answer. That's a Hadouken. Uh, uh, we as a Muslim, as a Muslim, we are not allowed to take any innocent life and destroy it. We are but not when you to do, take... what's the compensation? The compensation is equal because the nafas is unless equal to everybody. Are, Thank you. When... Unless there are... Okay. So, uh, unless there are Christians, or a no Jew, <laughs> or a Hindu. So Bring me a, a, a verse from the Quran which say a life of the Christian worth less 
than anybody else. I will tell you. Otherwise, you are just liar, deceiver, big mouth liar. He yes, says yes. I'm a liar and I'm a deceiver. Yeah, 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 Bring that. it okay, through the So let us look up my Islamic turn. practice my Bring my as turn. taught my by Islamic my sources. My turn, my turn. Put it, put it, put it here, put it here, please. Right. Let's talk about Christian law. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about Islamic. Let's Changing talk about your law. Change. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's not change the Wait a minute. Subject. Let me speak. Let's not change the subject. Hey, I let you speak. I let you speak. You have to let me speak now. That's the only fair. Otherwise, I go. I go home. You understand? Right then. Right now, I'm staying until you listen to me. All right. So. When Omar, the Caliph Omar, entered Jerusalem, Jerusalem was run by a Christian country, a Christian king. The Jews in Jerusalem said, we don't want them, we want a Muslim ruler. Lies. Because he will give us our rights. If you don't believe me... There were no Jews in Jerusalem finish. at let that me, time. They'd all been finish. expelled. He's lying. Let me, let me finish. Let He's me finish. lying. Let me finish. He's lying. If you don't believe you me... You are a liar because the, 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 the Jew always you, ex 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 exists in uh, if you don't, Jerusalem. Okay, okay, okay. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, look it up on Wikipedia. All right? Okay. You can do it right now. Look it up. Sorry. Game over. Next one. What did he prove? Next one. What did he prove? Next point. How did he repudiate Next, well, anything? You're not even I listening. Mean, so. What he's trying to prove. What are you trying to prove? Bruv, you know what happened to you two weeks ago, man? You know? what, what happened I'm to you two weeks ago? Okay, okay. Yeah. What happened to you two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. What was it? You were having the argument. I had an argument with a guy. Yeah, just all You know we're in Speaker's Corner, right? People have arguments. Go on. Right, yeah, I'm going to bring evidence. Oh, this is evidence. This is his evidence. <laughs> All right. Wow, what a knowledgeable so, guy. He has to look on his phone for everything. Mate, everything okay, I have is in my brother, head. ladies and gentlemen, the brother has made a lot of noise. A lot of noise. Yeah, no need to touch. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Uh, all right. I know I'm attractive right, guy, I, I just don't it. swing that way. I don't appreciate you. Hey, hey, I thought you were a Muslim woman a few minutes ago. Uh, uh, I, just, you know I, mean? I just prefer if you don't flirt with me, thank you. I thought you were a Muslim woman a minute ago. So, so. I thought you were a Muslim woman. So. Chill out, chill out. Look at yeah, please speak. Saudi please Arabia please speak. and how they have applied Islam. Saudi Arabia, which teaches Salafism, has created a system of law in which the compensation that is paid for the life of a Christian is half that of a Muslim. That is an apartheid system. In Islamic law, according to the Pact of Ummah, Christians, Christians are not allowed to practice their faith publicly. Uh, am I Ahmad? Or am I just speaking facts to which you are triggered? Am I? Am I speaking well, nonsense? Thank you. Why is it nonsense? Why is it nonsense? You don't like it. Why is it nonsense? You're last week. last week. Why is it nonsense? Why is it nonsense? Why is it nonsense? Why is it nonsense? What is it nonsense? Now notice, notice, no arguments, no arguments, no arguments, just ad hominem. Because they haven't got arguments. Because you can't justify an apartheid system on one hand while saying that you don't want an apartheid system applied to you. Muslims would object if we treat Muslims as Sharia law stipulates that Christians should be treated. Have you finished? Now, let's give some examples. Can I, can I speak, please? Let's give some examples. According to the Pact of Umar, and this was used by Muslims to justify how they treat Christians in Egypt, Christians could not have public displays of their faith that may offend Muslims. Yeah, exactly. Don't. Don't. Don't even entertain the idea. I'm, I'm looking at my daughter right now. So, I got more reporters so my life. Muslims can't become Christians even if they want to, they would be executed under the apostasy laws. Imagine if the British government passed a law that said anyone who becomes a Muslim, we execute you. Let's talk about what the Roman Christians... Let's talk Christian. about... Let's talk right, why about, are we pushing, bro? Why are we pushing? Let's talk about... Why are we pushing? Let's talk about... Let's talk about, let's talk about so, what the Roman Christians so, did to Jewish people. So, let's talk about that. Can you address those the points Jews, for me? Yeah, the Jews... Can you address yes, those yes, points? Yes, I'm about to. You need to stop talking about... Okay, now. so let's talk about All right, your stop. justification. Yeah, stop. First of He's all, going stop. to give a justification. 
Go on. Right, have you finished? Go on. What's your justification? Have you finished? What's your justification? Have you finished? What's your justification? Have you finished? <laughs> What's your justification? Have you finished? I'm listening. All right, let me talk now. Let me talk. Don't let me. Don't interrupt me. Cause that's, cause that's rude. Exactly. That's rude. All right then. All right. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's talk about a Christian ruler. Let's talk about a Christian state. All right. Let's talk about the Andalusian state when Isabel and, and Ferdinand, when they came, they took over the Andalusian uh, Caliphate. What did they do to the Christians? What did they do to the Jews and the Muslims? They slaughtered them. Yeah, thank you. Let's talk about, let's talk about Hitler. He was a Christian. No, Hitler wasn't a Christian. Let's talk about Hitler. He was a pagan. Let me finish. Okay, you're not lying. He was a Christian. Let me finish. He believed in the Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Hitler was a neo-pagan. He wanted to manipulate Guys, if you're not going to let me talk, then I'm going to go. Here's the problem. If you're not going to let me talk, here's the problem. I'm going to go because you're not letting me finish. Queen Catherine. You haven't let me finish. And King Ferdinand of Spain are not considered prophets. I'm going to go. They are not if considered you religious if authorities. You don't let me talk. He I'm is comparing leave. two Catholic monarchs who were intolerant. He's right, they were. But he's comparing them to Muhammad and the Sahaba. Ah. Okay, have you finished? So his okay. justification if I, if I for the injustice in Islam is that 700 years later. Christians were also intolerant. Ah. What about the 700 years of Islamic intolerance okay. against Christians and Jews? If you interrupt me once more and you don't let me finish, like I've given you the courtesy. <laughs> you haven't given yeah, it. You've I been have. interrupting all the way Every through. Every time I've given you the you've courtesy. You've been interrupting and you've pushed. You're so don't try to present yourself as some if you, virtuous If you interrupt innocent. me, if you interrupt me once again, I would have to leave because you're not letting me say. You're just standing here shouting away and you're not letting me talk. I'm not, I'm not I am okay with him. I'm not talking to you. All right. So let me talk because that's what we're having here. We're having a discussion, yeah? All right. If you want to preach, I'll go. So, in response to okay, my okay. So, thank you. So, be quiet now. So, if you don't, if you don't mind, be quiet now. No one's your dimmy. Anders, Anders no Brevik. Anders Brevik. Anders Brevik was a self-proclaimed Christian missionary. He massacred 93 <laughs> people five years ago. Why are you laughing, man? Because you're lying. Why are you laughing, man? Why are you laughing? You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. That's why. You're lying. Anders Brevik declared himself a neo-pagan. You hear that? A neo pagan. A neo pagan. He was a neo pagan. Alright, so I think that a lot of people need to do a check on their thinking. If you're going to oppose injustice, you need to oppose all forms of injustice and not make special exceptions or exemptions for certain categories or ideologies. Islam is intrinsically unjust. And if you're going to... Whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? Keep your hands off other people's property. So far you've pushed people, now you're touching other people's stuff. Yeah? So, so, ladies and gentlemen, the kind, the kind of hypocrisy that we see from the militant left and from the liberal progressive is that they'll stand against Islamophobia here but they are silent against anti-Christian pogroms in Egypt and Pakistan and Nigeria and Algeria they are opposed they are silent they are silent about the religious genocide of Christians in Iraq <laughs> Come and okay. debate me, miss. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, what's your name? Oh, no. Ollie. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ollie. Nice to meet you. Okay, so your point about, oh my god, the left here isn't going against ISIS or the militant left in Islamic countries is simply because I am not Egyptian. I do not have any control of the Egyptian government. Where I do have control as a citizen of the UK is over the UK government, the UK press. I am fighting injustices. My country, and you talk about internal hypocrisy, Bro, why are you and you're going off about oh, militant Islam what, and militant. Why are you, wait, he's kicking me, and now he's telling me to shut my mouth. 
and you're going to go against the rules. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Bro, 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 no one is your dimmy here. I didn't touch you, bro. No one is your dimmy here. Relax yourself. No one is your dimmy. Relax yourself, bro. Yeah? You can't, you can't take it. Step away. My point, is, my point is, if you're going to go off against militant Islam and no, no, it wasn't an attack. Yes, how come we're not Super. hearing I'm, I'm about you talking about militant Christians in Jamaica or Uganda, which are currently killing LGBT people? How about I don't hear you going off? <laughs> okay. Sorry. How about I don't hear you going off about the alt right in this country attacking mosques, burning them down, the Finsbury Park Thank mosque you. attack? Thank you. The fact of this country is, is that if you are Muslim, you are inherently you face prejudice that you do not face as a Christian. Not prejudice. Just because there's one Muslim man in power doesn't mean that no Muslims get oppressed against. Okay, can I reply, Ali? Let me just finish my point very quickly. I'll let you finish. My By the way, bro, this is how you do an intelligent conversation. Leave him alone. <laughs> you talking about him. I'm talking, I'm talking to him. To him. Well, I'm not interested in him. I'm debating you, so you look at That's me and fine. answer me. Go on, sister. Okay, so my point is, if you're talking about, oh, yes, the right. militant yeah, Muslim, oh, militant yeah. Islam, how come you are silent? Yeah. And I mean silent on well, other, yeah. other, well, other nations. You know, I haven't heard you talk about terrorist Buddhists in Thailand. I haven't heard you talk at all about in Malaysia, the anti-communist mafia there that slaughtered millions of people less than 10 years ago. How, how, how come when we talk about Islam in this country, whenever someone who happens to be of Muslim faith does something awful, I'm not saying all Muslims are something inherently better, their faith or their race is put in can front of everything. Now? Pakistani man just can, X. Can I, can I, when Joseph Brinsel when Joseph Brinsel does point, anything, is his race or if his is his race we, we or is his religion put reply, in front of that? Can I reply, That's my ending point. Okay. Thank you, so, thank you. Thank you, Oli. Thank you. Thank you. So, firstly, let's just correct the category mistake. Let's just correct the category mistake. Islam is not a race, Muslims are not a race. Yeah, I said Secondly, race secondly, 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 many of you have heard me speak before. How many of you heard me speak against ethno-nationalists? Yeah. How many of you heard me speak against communists? How many of you heard me speak against Buddhist terrorists who persecute Christians? Thank you very much. So you're wrong. You're just plain wrong. Secondly, 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 she said, this is, this is often, this is often, this is often a left-wing excuse to why they're so selective on their issues. I can't protest against the jihadis or against the non-jihadi Muslims who are just generally persecuting Christians in Egypt and Pakistan, she snorts in derision. But I tell you, she has not even looked into this topic. Because I'm a British citizen. I'm sorry, didn't the whole BLM kick off because of something that happened in America? Wasn't that the whole reason why the BLM march has started? Because of something that happened in a different country? What hypocrisy of the left. It is simply that the left has an ideological blind spot and the blind spot is this. We're against injustice unless the injustice is something that is emanating from what we perceive to be an ethnic minority. Perfect. That is why the young lady doesn't know about Nisa Hussein, a British Christian who had Muslims attempt to murder him in the UK. That's why the young lady doesn't know about the other examples of Christians. Like Mohammed, a friend of mine, someone I know, who has been persecuted by Muslims because he became a Christian in this country. That's why the lady doesn't know that or speak out against the widespread prejudice against Christians and Jews that emanates from sections of the Muslim community. Now, we have to obviously differentiate two things, the Muslim and the religion. Lots of Muslims are better than their religion. Lots of Muslims have very humanitarian ethic. They have compassion. They're good people not to be villainized because of the crimes of a few. However, when you look at Islam 
as an ideology, the books and the texts. You see injustice being taught. An injustice like, for example, the blood money paid for the death of a Christian is half that of the death of a Muslim. Now, do you agree? I'll answer it the next time. You reply and then I'll answer your question. Let me, let me, yes, first of all, my issue with your argument here is that you are just straw manning me and going off of whatever you want in order to prove your point. Firstly, I was talking about the left. Okay, great. I'm not the left. You're debating me. You're not de debating this vague concept of the left you have come up with. Okay, secondly, you were talking about the Quran, I assume, and, and Muslim holy texts. Are you Christian? You spend a lot of your time defending Christians, yet have you actually read the Bible? The Bible, like the Quran, because this was a book written written thousands of years ago in a different in a country in a I would bet lots of money you never read the Bible. I went to Catholic school for eight years. Doesn't prove anything. Doesn't prove anything. Okay, let me just finish my point, please. Very because you're talking about how you don't know how to debate properly. I'm trying to debate you properly. Okay, my point is is that in the Bible, like in the Quran, there are many, many, many cases like when God tells tells the tribe of Israel, oh, you don't have enough, you don't have enough women. Okay, just go kidnap and rape whoever you want. You want. If you rape a woman, you have to pay her father 15 silvers in order to marry her. That's in the Old what? Testament. You yeah, can read 50, it, my 50 friend. 50 shekel, I have it here. It, it, she's it, right. <laughs> she's it, right. It is. She's so, right. Okay, it, what's yeah. interesting here is that you are pick and choosing what you want. What? Shut up, right? What? It's picking and choosing from whatever religious text you want in order to prove your point. Do I agree that there are some passages in the Quran that I personally disagree with? Yes. But the problem is, you say, oh, some Muslims are nice, some Muslims are better than them religion. But then when you go on to talk about Muslims as this vague, threatening entity. I talked about Islam. Islam. Islam, Muslims. Not Blurring, not the same thing. It is the same thing. Well, the, way you're, the way you're talking about it, you're talking about Islam. No, that's this. the way you're hearing it. He, he wants to separate well, Islam from the Muslim. He wants to separate Islam from the Muslim. The Muslim are abide by yeah, yeah. the Islamic teaching. Okay. Yes. We're having a conversation. And you are you distorting the If someone is a religious person and their religion is a huge part of their life, you can't separate them from their religion. Thank you very much. So if you're going on talking about the second largest religion in the entire world, painting up all these broad strokes, that is frankly a very prejudiced thing for you to do and so i think you want to talk about fighting injustices why don't you actually listen there are there are plenty of muslims who renounce who renounce jihadis who renounce extremists who do that all the time why is it that whenever say in uganda another LGBT person is killed or beaten to death. We don't go up to every Christian and go, so you need to apologize for that, mate, because some of you of your faith did it. But whenever a Muslim individual does something, we go to all Muslims and say, hey, mate, we need a statement on you, renouncing jihadi, <laughs> renouncing FGM, renouncing this. The Thank Muslim you. faith has 1.2 billion Oli? people. You're reply? expecting yes, all of them to pay for the crimes of a minute, simple. Yeah. So the characterizations That's and the straw mans that Ollie has used in her rhetoric on numerous. Firstly, she accuses me of generalizing about Muslims when anyone who actually listened to what I said heard me very distinctly say that not all Muslims are the same and that there is a distinction between what the te religion teaches vis-a-vis -vis necessarily what the individual does. But she ignored that. She ignored that. Well, people can see it on camera, can't they? They can see it on camera. Secondly, 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 she goes on to say that I and people like me go round to all Muslims demanding that they apologize for every time that there's a terrorist attack. Utter lie. Complete lie. I've never done that. I've ne never met a Christian who does that either. She's just using characterizations. Now please notice the liberal progressive talked about listening and she's now ignoring. Just another example of their kind of virtue signaling hypocrisy. Now, Furthermore, yeah, furthermore, is hypocrite, furthermore, furthermore, answer a question. furthermore, and just go around for furthermore, this is, this is furthermore, furthermore, <laughs> furthermore, so then she goes on to talk about the Christian faith and Bible passages, one of which, one of which she generalized as if all Christians believe this. The woman is ignorant of the topic she's talking about because Christians read the Bible through a covenant matrix. 
The Old Testament belongs to the Old Covenant. Christians do not follow the Old Covenant. If she was anything other than another virtue signaling ignorant progressive, she would not have made that generalization about what Christians believe. She would have had the intelligence to know that Christians follow the New Testament because we are a new covenant people. It's a new testament finally, on the innocent finally, blood of Jesus Christ. Finally, he was crucified, finally, finally, humiliated on the cross, yeah, and the Father, yeah, yeah. he had said, yeah, yeah, he loves to be in front of the camera. He loves to be in front of the camera. We love you, yeah, yeah. Let me in her talk. So, I would like, she says, why do we not protest? Why do we protest? about when LGBT suffer in places like Uganda. Now, this is the economy of injustices and the economy of solidarity that she appealed to earlier. I do not stand against the prejudice faced by Christians in other countries because I'm a British citizen. Well, I'm a Christian. And Christians in this country have been the victim of LGBT militants who have gone out to try and ruin their businesses, have gone out and tried to ruin their lives, and there are countless examples of them doing so. When that injustice is dealt with here, then let's talk about what's happening in Uganda. And no, I don't agree with LGBT being killed at all, anywhere. Incidentally, Islam prescribes the death penalty for LGBT. I wonder if she'll be protesting against that anytime soon. Off the roof! Off the roof! Off the roof! Off the roof! Shut them! Off the roof! Or burn them alive! That's another punishment. Are you okay with the gay men? Are you are you okay with that? Off the roof! Sweetie, calm down. Let me let me let me respond. I know you're sweetie, lovely. You know. Let the lady speak. What did the Bible say? Okay, one, one, one. My, my first point, if everyone could just be a bit calm. And another gay man off a room goes somewhere in the middle of the world. Ollie, 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 people will help you. It's just a thing, you just got to talk. I don't, I know that. My point is all I was, did I ever once defend the point of Islam? I never said Islam was a completely innocent book. I was saying it's interesting how this man and his supporters, is it, is it, how this man and his supporters are cherry picking what they want from groups they don't like in order to vilify them. You were talking, you were talking about, I never once said, oh, everything in the Quran is great, Islam has no issues. I, I never said that. It's interesting how you assume my ignorance, good sir, that proves your prejudice. Anyway. Your ignorance is on display. Leviticus 2013. Anyway, kill, kill, advice, kill homosexual and lesb lesbian, okay. put them to death. This is according to your Bible. Old Testament. Okay. Old Testament. Thank you. And <laughs> as a Jesus, thank you, thank you. he came to not abolish the law. You know, I'm no, talking to Ali. No, I, 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 Ali. Okay, and, context, context. and also, context. also, you yeah, yeah. talk context. about. Context, context. Can, can we just see this back? Yeah. Okay. The Free Palestine one. Yeah. Because she only protests about things in this country. Ah. I never, let me let me just finish. Let me just protest about things in this country. Okay, it's interesting how you're changing the topic and actually instead of actually listening to me, which is something you yeah. criticised me for earlier. So if you're going to criticise me for something, at least hold up to your own very feeble standards. Okay. Moving on, I never said for one second that the Quran was an entirely good or sacred book. I never said that anything was great. All I was pointing out is that you were cherry picking what you want from certain holy books to make an answer. And moving on to your very interesting point about Christians in this country being un persecuted by LGBT militants. I'm a member of the LGBT community. I must have mi missed that meeting when we decided to form a military. Okay, so what you're talking about is you're talking about when you talk about kind of 
Christians being persecuted by LGBT people. I've got a question. I didn't say people. I said militants. Militants. I okay. know lots of people who are LGBT that wouldn't dream of doing that. I know, and you're not racist because you have a black friend. Anyway, let me continue. <laughs> I do, actually. Yeah. I do. Yeah. She's right. She's right. I am not a racist, <laughs> and I do have a black friend. Yeah. 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 Let me, let me yeah. continue. Captain Blood this, this is my brother, by the way. Oh, this is my brother in the face. Oh. Am I a racist? Sister? You're not elated. Am I a racist? Am I a racist? Did I ever say you were You tried to insinuate it. I was saying that that excuse is saying, oh, I can't be prejudiced against a certain group of people because I have a friend in this group. An excuse that I never made. Is something as false? He hasn't listened to a word you've said. Oh, I have. That's why I've responded to it. That I've responded to it. Okay, let me, let, okay, if we're going to interrupt each other, you boys can go have fun. Let me just finish my point right here. My point... Hold on, don't assume my gender. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. You assumed our genders. Wow. Not very progressive. Okay. <laughs> Not very progressive. Okay. Did I, it's interesting that you instantly assume I'm some sort of progressive liberal when I've never really stated my political. I've never really said which party I'll I belong to. But anyway, let me continue my point. My point here is that when we talk about Islamophobia in this country, and when we're talking about a group of Muslim people being oppressed, we're not saying that suddenly all Muslim people are innately holy than everyone else are innately good are innately better same when we're talking about black people in this country when we say black lives matter when we say we want equality we're not saying that suddenly they are better than everyone else and it's and what's very interesting is when you talk to privileged people about equality they suddenly get terrified because they are terrified at the prospect of being remotely re being remotely oppressed in any sense of the word and this shows how privileged they are when the idea of giving up any privilege they have suddenly sounds like oppression to them. You're, and so I just find it kind of remarkable that you're using, you're cherry picking these arguments, you're not really responding to me, you're screaming about, you know, Islam and things like that, and you're screaming about the Old Testament and punishments in the Middle East against gay people, which, and suddenly I'm for them? Yeah, sure, as a queer person myself, I'm clearly very for gays in Saudi Arabia being thrown off bridges. I will tell you when you're ready to reply. So, we'll let you my, point. my final point is this. What I find in this debate is that you have your pre-prepared notes, you have your pre-prepared lectures, which is fine, I'm not, but you like to, you're not really answering me, you like to twist and cherry pick and change what you want to make your argument, and you're not actually listening to people, and this is what I find with people of your political persuasion, instead, in, instead of trying to listen and advocate for equality, to you suddenly, you have to twist equality into something that sounds like oppression for the white man. When no one's ever said let's oppress the white man, no one's ever said let's go against Christians, and that's it. It sounds okay, like. Okay, can I can I reply now? So, yes. so Oli, Oli, I, I do find it funny that Ollie's initial excuse for not standing up against Christophobia, and I, I'd be interested to know if she believes it even exists. Not standing up to Christophobia that exists right across the Islamic world is because she says I'm a citizen of this country, and yet she's wearing a badge saying Free Palestine. So she clearly is involved in political activism connected to other countries. So what we're really saying is, is I don't want, of course it is, I don't want to stand up to Christophobia in the Islamic world because that doesn't serve my particular set of prejudices. And, and what, what we see, what we see from the liberal progressive left is the simple use of straw man and villainization. Villainization. She doesn't even know that my political viewpoint sits both across the left and the right, because a Christian worldview sits across the left and the right. She used tropes based upon the Old Testament in complete ignorance of the fact that Christians use a covenant system to read the Bible. These kind of stereotypes and these kind of characterizations are very uh, widespread amongst people who have the liberal progressive agenda. That is the way that they operate. Villainization, characterization, characterize assassination. And they simply ignore facts, because facts are inconvenient. Fact is, she talks about freeing Palestine. Does she know that Christians are persecuted by Palestinian Muslims? Does she know 
the Christians suffer because of the policies of Israel. They get it twice. Once because they're not part of the Jewish state and once because they're Christians in a Muslim majority. Will she stand against that? Will she speak against that? No, I said on record, she may have not heard me, that I'm against killing LGBT anywhere in the world. Let me ask you, are you against the idea of killing Muslims who want to become Christian? Okay. I need to ask. You kind of clearly so lost. Look, I'm an Arab, yeah? We have, we live side by side, Christians, Christians, no problem. Yeah, let, let me just, yeah, let me just... Tell that to the Assyrian Christians and the Armenian Christians who suffered a genocide in 1915 okay. and in 2012 or 13 when ISIS went out to butcher them. Okay. Um, live side by side. Okay, what, what... He says, she, he says that I'm a liar. Yeah, what right. about the Christians in, in in those Iraqi cities who said that their neighbours turned against them. Wow, uh, okay. They're on record, they're on camera. If you're gonna, if you're gonna lecture, I'm just gonna leave. Go on. Um, that is a political thing, not excuse, a Sir, excuse me, can I just finish my point? I'm an Arab. We have the opportunity. Uh, you, you, you don't want to bat in and all that. And I'll be doing the record, bro. So walk away, walk away, bro. And be quiet, I'm speaking walk away. You did it to the Christians. Why won't you do it to the Muslims? Because that one was being a dickhead. Anyway. And he's not. So, let me... Okay, so I find it interesting that because of my badge, you've suddenly gone off on this crazy little... I wasn't here to debate Palestine. Um, if you want to, you'll have to book an appointment. I'm rather busy and quite tired right now. So, um, you're saying, am I against the killing of Christians? Yes, I, um, I support human rights. I'm against, you know, the killing of anyone based on their political beliefs. But what we are talking about and what, you, what I was originally what I originally came to speak to you about is because you seem to be ignoring the inherent Islamophobia that many Muslims face in this country and, and yes yes it's horrible that Christians are getting killed but you but, you point out the Armenian genocide you point out ISIS in 2013 yes these are all awful terrible terrible things the thing is is that you seem to talk like Islam is inherently a religion that cannot live side by side with other religions. Correct. When you believe that, that yeah. Islam in... That's interesting because the Ottoman Empire managed to do that for about 600 years. Do you know anything about the Ottoman Empire? I know... Do you know that they took two million Christian children as slaves, kidnapped them from their families? You don't, do you? You don't know nothing about the Ottoman Empire. If, if you let me finish my point... Do you, know, do you know that during the Ottoman Empire, Christian cops were regularly attacked in the street? That they had to wear special clothing that identified them as Christians, a bit like a Jewish star, you know, in Nazi Germany. Did you know that? You didn't, did you? You don't know nothing about the Ottoman Empire. You don't know nothing about what they did to Eastern Europe. What were you going to say about the Ottoman Empire? Let me finish my point. I'm saying... Go on, about the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, How wonderful you... it was. I'm not going to, I never said the Ottoman Empire, I was saying that there were many cities throughout the Ottoman Empire and throughout the Islamic Golden Age in which Christians, Jewish and Muslim Golden people Age. all lived together. It lasted 200 years in the Middle Yes, it did. The Baghdad House of Wisdom, for example, to which we owe algebra, to which we owe lemons, to which we owe all that. Which they took from the Hindus. And India. But you didn't know that either, did you? Did you know that India was Muslim for a very long time? No, too? it was Hindu. Well, I mean, what the religions that came to make up Hinduism. Well, see, they invaded is, India. It was one of the biggest mass murders ever in history. Didn't the Christians invade Africa? The Christians. Oh, no, we forgot about that. No, no, of course, bro. bro. Christians are so innocent, ignorant. aren't they? Ignorant. Ignorant. Let, let, let me correct you. South America. Ignorant. Let me correct you. Ignorant. Let me correct you. New Zealand. Ignorant. Let me correct, you. Ignorant. Excuse let me excuse correct you about history. On and on and on. It was called the Roman Empire and the Christians converted it. They were the ones that controlled North Africa. So no, ignorant, love it, love Christians it, it, did it, not Christians invade in North Africa. Africa. Masking so the tribe what I find interesting, them and what I find them to interesting here is that you seem completely either ignorant, unwilling, or unable to comprehend the fact that it's not purely religion that drives people to commit atrocities. It's greed, 
it's well if you want to talk about what the ottoman empire did i never said the ottoman empire was amazing i was saying there was evidence of many muslims of many jews of many christians living together in harmony and you can see that harmony in do you know anything about dimitude can, can harmony do you know anything about dimitude do you know what they did to christians Christians could not practice their faith publicly. Christians could not ring their bells. Christians could go, not go on their processions. Christian men couldn't marry Muslim women. Like I Tr said. Muslims couldn't become Christians. Christians couldn't evangelize. They had to pay excuse a tax. Me, they me, had sir. to You're pay the a one. tax. You're the one going they had to pay a tax to stop yeah, their children to from being me. kidnapped. Which, which from being kidnapped. And you're LGBT saying, community. oh, you're they live in harmony. Get out of your Walt Disney version of history. <laughs> Go and pick up a book, read the hagiographies, look at the Christian martyrs and how many Christians were killed because they wouldn't embrace Islam. I'm Go and look those the things up. The Great Dying, was that a fault of Christians? Just a quick question, the Great... Sorry. Oh, someone needs to pick up a book and learn history now. The oh what? no, no I, I thought I was the ignorant one. The, 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 the Great Dying. The Great Dying. This is not a term I've heard before. Oh, a great dying because of the Columbian Exchange in which 90% 90 of the indigenous population of America was wiped out in one of the largest mass genocides Why? in human history. Why? Because of disease. Not because, because just because of, of disease. disease. Because of massacres. Because of things yes, like those yeah. happened as well. The but Native the vast American majority of those... Lat Australia Australia He's Australia. Latin American, you muppet. <laughs> the Latin Americans, the Latin Amer what happened in Latin America was okay, a travesty, mate, mate, was a travesty, and, and Christians in the time spoke out against it. Point. You don't know. Go and look up the Franciscans and the Dominicans. They were opposed to what the colonialists were doing okay, to the natives. So Christians speaking up against you that don't matter, know. but now Muslims speaking you don't up against jihadists. But now let me matter. ask you a question. No, no, I'm not going to let you ask me a question. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question anyway. You haven't let me speak. You haven't you let have me debate. Said, You've constantly interrupted me. If so you want to you, go off on your little fine. YouTube channel and have fun, you have I'm going to do that. I've actually got you stuff to do today. You're not interested in having a debate. You're clearly interested in having a debate. I'll answer your question. So, you said you're opposed to apostasy laws. There you go, liberal progressive. Runs away. Thank All you. the time. Bravo, Bob. How can, how can, that kind of cognitive dissonance, like, how can you even entertain it? And yet so many people do, as you've just seen. What you just saw was a perfect example of rhetoric, of excuses, and of the villainization of the white working class Christian. Yeah, because we're white working class and Christian. Now, the reality is, the reality is, there are injustices, too many injustices for any one person to stand against. So I would unset this challenge for you as Christians. What kind of injustices do you need to stand up against? Don't you need to stand up for your brothers and sisters who are having their businesses ruined, being chucked off university courses, having their employment ruined? Shouldn't you be standing up for the fact that Christians in places like Central African Republic are being killed in Nigeria, they're being wiped out. Shouldn't you stand up for the Christians in, in Iraq and Syria who are fighting for a homeland of their own? Yeah. So, or shouldn't you stand up for the Christians? Should, shouldn't you fight against for the Christians? Shouldn't you fight against Christians who are dying in Pakistan from persecution? Shouldn't you stand up for the Christians in Burma who are fighting for their own homeland? Shouldn't you stand up for the Christians in North Korea? Shouldn't you stand up for the Christians in China? You need to form networks of solidarity. We need to start backing one another and you need to start drawing in people to our causes. The reason why we are constantly being outmaneuvered is because we have zero political narrative, we are not strategizing, and we make enemies of people that could become allies. We are not seeking to make allies when we should be making allies and drawing people in to our causes. That is one of the secrets of the left and one of their great successes is that they have been able to draw people into their causes. You fight for my cause, I fight for your cause. That's what we need to start doing as a church. 
and we need to start standing up for our own causes. If you don't tell your history, others, like this lady, will try to tell your history for you. She tried to tell a lying history, a, a history of the Ottoman Empire being this wonderful, tolerant thing, until she got called out on it. And then she had nothing to say. She had nothing to say. Yeah? So, there you go. Brothers, you've got to choose. Got to choose. You've got to stand up for yourself or you've got to become a doormat. You take the choice. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Who did? You went there and changed the world of living. Who did? Who did? Did the Ottomans do that? They left people beat themselves. They left people beat themselves. They're lying. You're an ignorant man. You're an ignorant man. You're a psychopath. No, what they did is, I'll tell you what they did. Christians ring bells. The Ottomans stopped us from doing that. Is that letting us? Is that letting us? Church bells. Church bells. Is that allowing us to be ourselves? What happened in Nasser Conference? Can you answer the question? You've got out of here. What happened in 325 AD in Nasser Conference? Can you answer what the question? What happened in 325 AD in the We'll do a question for a question. I'll answer I'm, not, I'm talking to you. you. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking to you. Never. I'm big I'm daddy. Talking to you as well. I'm big daddy. You're right. Good you, have nice you, you have a history. You have a crazy history. My name's Bob. Your history is crazy. Who's don't... history? Christian history. Forget story. Christian history. You know what I'm saying. I'm no, talking to you. I don't know what you're saying. I'm, I'm asking you because you have your MI5 here. I'm asking you to clarify. I'm a politician by blood. My grandfather was a politician. Great. Talk talk like a politician then. That's what. So answer my question. I don't want to be a politician. I thought you were a politician. I was born into politics. I don't want to be a politician. Game. Question. Politics is a game. Are you a politician? Uh, no, you're I'm playing a game here. No, I'm you're a looking for numbers. You look for numbers, no, not I'm the truth. A Christian, bro. Let's say the truth, not numbers. You, you, you started numbers. with a lie. What lie? You what said lie? that the Ottomans allowed people yes. to get on with it. No, yes, be their way of life. Did they do that when they kidnapped their kids? Kid, what kids? Exactly. What, we don't know. what did you do? Did they do that what when they stopped do? them doing their processions? What did you do? No, they didn't. Did they? What did you do? Did they do that when they said? What did you do? You're talking about that when they passed the fingers. Did they do that back when they passed the law that said the Patriarch of Constantinople couldn't be anyone but someone who lived inside the Ottoman Empire? Or when the Caliphs appointed bishops and patriarchs? No, they didn't. You haven't got a clue what you're talking about. I cannot call someone a killer. You have got nothing. I cannot call someone a killer when I'm a killer. You've got a verbose noise and rhetoric. How can you call someone a killer when you're a biggest killer? Bro, are you talking to me as a Christian? You know, you know what time it is. No, I really don't. I'm asking you to story, clarify. You know what time it is. I think what you're really you're saying You're arguing behind Christianity. You're, this you're arguing behind white. Christianity. Forget story. It's because I'm white, isn't it? Forget story. You're arguing behind Christianity. I'm asking you. Is it because I'm white? You're arguing behind Christianity. Forget your, story. Your narrative. Is it based on the fact that I'm white? I'm asking you. What did you do? Why are you talking about the Ottoman? I'm asking you. When you say you, who's you? Why are you talking about the Ottoman? Who's you? Why are you talking about the Ottoman? I'm talking about the people that persecuted Christians. Who are the Ottoman? The Ottoman. Were Turkish Christians. Yeah, I know. Who are the Ottomans? Yeah, who are they? I've just answered. What you. race of people are they? They're Turkish. Are they white? And they persecuted Christians. Are they white? No, they're not. Well, why are you talking against them? Yeah, You're because they persecuted Christians. Ah, ah, Christians never persecuted they persecuted nobody. Christians. Christians never persecuted nobody. No, we're not faultless. We've uh, done our wrongs. Why have we done We've done our wrongs. Why have we done I'm, I'm not defending it. Well, uh, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying. Rita, if I was a reader, you could play around me. No, bro. This no, bro. You're the one. History. Yeah, great for you. Kingship. Great for you. Good. Me, I know. Kingship. Fantastic. I'll so take you to my why land, did you lie? Why? What lie? Why did you, why did you lie when you said that the Ottomans didn't persecute Christians? Why did you lie? Why did you lie? You said you killed as well. Why did you lie? Well, a killer should not be called somebody as a killer. Why did you lie? Why should a killer call someone as a killer? There's no point talking about it. Why should a killer call someone as a killer? It's incoherent. It's incoherent. Why should a killer call someone as a killer? Anyway, guys, there you go. Cool. Fine. Take care, King. Nice to meet you. Your history is a killer history. You killed around the world. Thank you. You went to India. You went to America and killed everybody. You got people looting. You looted the whole fucking continent. You even kill people. They looted the continent. In the name of, in the name of Christ. You looted the continent. Stay here. It's a mad man. Whenever they're talking, you're talking at their face.